Good morning, YouTubers. So today, I got something pretty interesting to cover, and that's MIG welding inductance settings. This is kind of one of those things, I never understood how it worked. I'd ask people, the, everybody gave me a different answer to how it works or what it does. So a long time ago, I did a ton of investigation, testing and stuff for my own use and kind of came to an understanding of what actually is going on. So for today, we are going to cover inductance settings and we're going to have book learning. We're going to have cut and etches. I'll probably do some arc footage as well to get a really good idea what's going on so that you can use it to your advantage. Because if you don't know what it does or how it works, how can you really use it effectively? So let's get into it. So let's start out talking about the book learning part. And this is very important, so please watch this before you just skip ahead, because if you don't listen to this, you're not gonna understand anything of what's actually going on. So the MIG process, you have essentially a wire, and this'll be your nozzle, that comes out of a contact tip and we'll draw the plate here. And here's your weld pool. The wire comes out, hits the metal, shorts out. The wire basically, in a way, explodes, which we'll say the explosion happens here. <laughs> it blows apart, and then this part where it blew apart then goes and stabs the metal or the molten puddle and then it blows apart and then it comes back out and it repeats itself. And that's why like, you're gonna find, I call the MIG process, the short arc MIG or short circuit MIG, I just call it MIG. And then if I'm talking about flux core, I call it flux core. If I call it spray arc, that's a different process. I pretty much call the short arc MIG process MIG. Now that's not factually correct because technically most of the processes other than flux core are also MIG metal inert gas, you get the picture. But the short arc MIG process, which C25 gas or CO2 functions this way, you're actually creating a direct short. So when this wire stabs this puddle, your voltage essentially goes to zero. So it goes to zero volts, the amperage boosts up, and then the amperage causes the wire to blow apart and then, like I said, it stabs a puddle. What The reason this is important is because there's far more going on here than just that. And that's where inductance comes in. What inductance is, in a nutshell, is when this wire stabs this puddle or the plate, gets hot and then blows apart, inductance is a setting or a control over how long that current rise takes to happen. So if you can imagine, like if you've ever stuck a stick rod or something where you have it and it starts glowing red and it takes a while and then eventually it's gonna blow apart or just melt off, similar concept. If your inductance is really low, which means that your current rises literally when it goes when it stabs that puddle and it creates a zero volt dead short and your current rise is literally 100% just instantaneous, that weld is going to, or that wire is going to blow apart. By adding inductance to your settings, the current rise may look more like this. With a slower current rise, the wire will not blow apart as fast. And depending on circumstances, it can create more heat input at the expense. Your puddle's going to be more liquidy, more fluid, probably less spatter, I would say, with a higher inductance. When you go super low inductance, you're typically going to have more spatter because you're blowing that wire apart. And the whole reason that this kind of functions is because the wire you're dealing with is such a small diameter that a massive current rise on it will easily blow it apart. With a stick electrode where you're running like 332 or eighth inch wire, the amount of current it would need to blow it apart like this is just so high that it's just not practical. 
Now, with all of that said and hopefully somewhat understood, I want to explain something regarding voltage. Now, with the short arc process, like I had mentioned, when that wire blows apart and what's left of the wire that's still feeding through the contact tip hits the plate, the voltage goes to zero. However, in the interim time that that wire is blown apart from here to your molten puddle, an arc will exist between that point. And by increasing your voltage, you're going to increase the arc length typically. And again, this is such a small, like this is grossly exaggerated. When you look at an actual process, this, is, this distance from here from your nozzle contact tip to here is only 3 eighths of an inch. So very small. But increasing the voltage essentially will cause the wire to blow apart and turn liquid further back towards the contact tip and then that will widen the, the arc that exists during the time that the wire is not shorted. And that's why when you increase voltage your weld pool often widens and that's because your arc that exists, the funnel is wider. So low voltage creates a very narrow funnel High voltage comes back here, and if you boost the voltage high enough to 28, 30 volts where you're spray arcing, you literally have an arc present all the way back almost to the contact tip, and you're just spraying liquid metal in. And there's a essentially an arc very much like a TIG arc, except in a cone, like a real wide, long cone, and that's with spray arc. But with the short arc MIG, it's... Uh, you don't have that like your wire shouldn't be turning to liquid it should be staying solid and then only the arc exists during the time that the wire blows apart hopefully that makes sense now with that said let me get this out of the way so we don't get confused not all welders wire welders have inductance settings your older hobart machines you know your transformer machines they do not have adjustable inductance some higher end machines will have adjustable inductance despite being transformers, but most of them don't. Newer machines, your digital ones, like the one that I have, Firepower, that has adjustable inductance. So if your machine doesn't have adjustable inductance, short of wiring an inductor in with it, you're screwed. You can't adjust it. Okay, if your machine does have adjustable, then you can play with the settings. And when we get into actually doing welds, you'll see the differences it makes and whether or not it's something you want to adjust. Now, the interesting thing is, is that, I guess, how much does it matter? Well, not a whole lot, but the reason I bring that up is that some people have like an old MIG machine or some machine that they really like the way it welds and then they get a, a different wire welder and they're like, man, that other one I had, I welded better. Well, if your inductance setting isn't adjustable, brand to brand, welder to welder, they're going to have slightly different inductance and you might like, like, hey, this thing has less spatter, the new one has more. And if it's not adjustable, you're kind of screwed. With the adjustability, you can tune it to where a modern welder will weld much like an older welder you might like. So when it comes down to the settings, I would recommend, if you can, buy a MIG machine with adjustable inductance because it will allow you to fine tune things. It's a way to get a weld, like the minimize spatter, to get it to wet out the way you want it, to have as liquid of a puddle as you would like, etc. You get the picture. So it's just an extra way of fine tuning a wire welder machine that I would recommend if you can get it. If you don't have it, doesn't matter. So now let's get into actually doing some welds and seeing the difference. All right, so I opened up this welder so we can talk about settings. Now, we're going to be running 030 wire, and if you look here, it does not depict quarter inch, but we'll be all right with approximately these values because we're just running beads on plate. I got a video coming out soon where we're going to test 030 versus 035 on quarter, but for right now, we're using 030. Now, when you look here, it says wire speed voltage and recommended inductance settings. And this is for C25 gas, which is what I have. When you look here, 
for these rough values, it's saying 5 to 9. So that's going to be on the higher level of inductance. When you get down to the thinner material, it's recommending a lower level of inductance. And that's something I haven't really done much uh, screwing around with inductance. I kind of set it at 4 and left it. So whether I was welding thin or thick with this welder, I set it at that. So that's kind of the point of doing this video and testing it and screwing around. We're going to see the penetration, how it wets out with all the same settings other than inductance. Now, it's worth saying as well that when you come down here to mild steel with flux core, that runs different inductance settings, typically on the lower end compared to hardwire MIG, so slightly lower. And that's why, like, if you have a fixed, like, transformer machine without any inductance settings, you can't tailor a particular wire type to what you're welding. So you're really losing out if you don't have control over it. And something I didn't mention earlier that's worth saying is that when you weld thinner stuff, like they're recommending lower, when your inductance is really low, you have a hard, like, crispy arc that freezes fast. That can be very beneficial for welding thin material because having that wire super hot for longer can end up putting more heat into it in a more liquid puddle. So, like, on auto body, definitely with thin, like, 023 wire, your inductance, like, it even recommends here, literally, as low as you can go. That will help you prevent from blowing holes. The other thing I didn't mention that I will now is that the lower your inductance is, the more times per second that wire is going to blow apart and stab the puddle. Because you have to remember with the MIG process, short arc MIG, it's constant voltage, variable amperage. With the variable amperage, the amperage that the machine outputs is whatever it takes to clear the short. So if you're feeding a ton of a wire with low inductance, that wire will just blow apart instantly and then feed in, blow apart, feed in, because the wire feeds the same, but it's going to do that more times per second. With very high inductance, it's going to do that a lot less, which again, less spatter, typically more fluid weld pool. Hopefully that makes sense. So for settings wise, We'll do 320 and we'll do 19 and a half, 20 volts, somewhere near it. It's just a ballpark.
All right, so here are the three welds that I did. I did this one at the lowest inductance setting, I believe, of one. This one at the inductance setting of five. This one at the inductance setting of nine. No values were changed other than inductance. Now, just to get it out of the way, this thing, some crap fell out of the nozzle right into the weld pool. Don't mind that, my bad. So on first glance, they don't look that much different. However, if you really look at this, this weld is a little bit more peaked than this one, and this one is a little bit more than this. The ripple pattern in it is also slightly different. You'll be able to see the differences a little bit more, and you can see, again, it's, it's very difficult on camera to see it, but this is slightly more roped up, slightly flatter, slightly flatter yet. Now, I will be doing a cut and etch on this so we can see if it changed what's inside. Now, from my perspective as the person doing the, the idiot behind the trigger, per se, the, the welder, this ran what I would call very crispy. Okay, it ran, it sounded kind of like 6010. If you look at all of this BBs, all these BBs, there is also like kind of, I don't want to call it fibers, but like almost like pieces of metal, kind of like you see it up here. I mean, I guess just BBs and whatnot all on that. So definitely a lot more smaller spatter. Inductance of five, I would say had like 80% less spatter and then when you come over here, which most of this is probably just from this, there's virtually, when you look on this side, like you compare it, a whole bunch of spatter, a lot less spatter on this side, and then almost virtually none. And so this was very soft sounding, not harsh, a lot less spatter. What I didn't like about this is the puddle, you know, the MIG nozzle obscures a lot of your puddle. So I can't really see what's going on beyond a certain point. Like that's one of the reasons why I like flux corn stick is because I can see a lot more. That MIG nozzle takes up so much of the real estate, the visibility is poor. So, but from what I was seeing, the weld pool on this guy was very liquidy. Like it's just stayed liquid far behind where I was welding. I would say if you're trying to run high inductance and weld uphill, I have a feeling that your weld is gonna to wanna to drip. So running lower inductance will definitely help for out of position, also for poor fit up. I can't imagine trying to fill a gap with very high inductance settings because the molten metal is just gonna end up dripping out of there and be a little bit out of control. But for what we have here, subtle, subtle differences, if I had to take a, I guess, a, a stab at an ideal setting, I think that somewhere between nine and five, maybe six, would probably be ideal for how I like my molten puddle to look. But five here, so midway for this hard wire, 030 wire and C25 seems to be pretty ideal for this welder for me. I don't like the harshness of this, you know, and the excessive spatter that's not a deal breaker, but it's something to think of. The last thing I'll mention before we actually look at some arc footage so you guys can see sort of what I'm seeing, probably better than I'm seeing, is that your inductance also can be changed based on your shielding gas. So if you're running 100% CO2, the inductance that you'll be running will likely be a little bit different of a setting than what you're gonna run with C25. So again, it pays to experiment. All right, let's do some arc footage. So this footage isn't the best, but the main thing you wanna watch is how close the more liquidy part stays to the wire in the puddle. You can see it trails pretty close to it. So if you look at this, the molten puddle is more fluid, bubbly, and it's about one and a half times as long with higher inductance. It's not a huge difference, but it's there. To be honest, it's almost like I'm welding on a preheated plate. It's kind of what it looks to me like.
So here they are back to back. The high inductance is on the bottom, the low is on the top. And you can see the difference is somewhat subtle, but that molten area is definitely a little bit longer on the bottom one. Well, if the proof is in the pudding, here's the pudding. Let's look at the cut and etch on the low, medium, and high inductance. So the results kind of speak for themselves. There's virtually no difference in penetration. I mean, the depth of it, the width. If you look, the lower inductance, which is on the far left, the high inductance is on the far right. Maybe the low is a little bit wider, but that again could be just where I cut it in a plate. And if I cut, you know, four more samples out of it, they could look basically the exact opposite. But I would say the effect on actual penetration is minimal. You can tell that the low inductance, the bead is kind of shaped like a dome. And then as you go to higher inductance, it definitely widens out. Now, some of that may just be me and maybe my travel speed changed a little bit. But, I mean, it's a difference, it's subtle, it's there, it's not really, you know, it's a fine-tuning mechanism, uh, not really, you know, massive changes are going to be made by changing inductance. And again, I, I think you're going to see better results with inductance control on very thin material than you probably will thick. Well, where does that leave us? Well... I guess I learned a few things and Weld Inspector Bunny over here. <laughs> Look at him over here. Eating the corn I put out for him. So anyways, Weld Inspector Bunny there pretty much thinks the same thing that I do. Inductance is a subtle difference and it's really more of a fine tuning mechanism, not so much like <laughs> a coarse tuning. And it's a great tool to have in your toolbox, especially if you do a lot of switching between MIG wire with gas shielding and flux core, etc. It can give you that extra edge to get rid of a little bit more spatter, maybe give the puddle, you know, a little bit more time to wet out. And this is just flat plate. You guys got to understand that if you were doing fillet welds and outside corner joints and a bunch of them, a, you know, up or down one or two on inductance could make the difference between a perfect clean weld and one that you might have to go back and clean the spatter off a little bit. And it may help the wetting out of the toes. As you saw, the penetration differences between these virtually identical which this video is, again, very similar to the two previous ones where I screwed around with just wire feed and just voltage. And you're hopefully gathering the information that I'm trying to show you guys is that with wire welding, any single variable that changes doesn't really affect your penetration that much on its own. It's like a series of variables that come together to either give you what you need or not give you that. And that's why it's so important to do testing and have a better understanding of what's going on. Because you might think you're making a difference with your settings and you're not. And really in welding in general, what matters is, is that your weld appearance isn't full of porosity. It doesn't have like dingle parries like that. That your toes aren't cold and that you're using the right process for what you're welding. Like if this was 3 8 plate, we have no business using short arc MIG on it. Quarter inch is about the limit. But again, it pays to actually test. cut and etch and work with what you got and really know what you're dealing with. But yeah, like I said, the results aren't too unexpected for me. If I had to pick a favorite setting with this 030 wire, like I had said earlier in the video, I would say five to seven seems to be about good. On thinner material, you could go a little lower. And that's a, another thing worth mentioning with welding. On the extremes is when you see the biggest difference. Like when you compare low inductance to very high inductance, the difference is pretty extreme. When you compare welding on thin material like 22, 24 gauge versus thicker like quarter, the differences that you're going to see from inductance, I think, is going to be more significant. But 
Hopefully you learned enough in this video to get a little bit better idea of what's going on and play around with it. I can't stress enough, guys, how important it is that you get to know how your welder performs. Like, for me, I rarely hold on to a welder long enough to really know the ins and outs and have predictable results from it. I'm always buying and selling them. Well, that's kind of a detriment because I never really get dialed in. It's very important that you get dialed in. So go out, screw around with some plates, practice, do some cut and etches yourself. Get to know how your machine works. It'll make you a better welder and you'll be able to build cooler, stronger stuff. So with that said, thanks for sticking around. Till next time.